A tiny drop of land in the Indian Ocean. Sri Lanka. These palm-fringed shores have seduced travelers from around the globe for centuries. Drawn to its mountainous heart, where creatures found nowhere else on Earth hide amongst cloud-cloaked trees. Adventurers were enticed by tales of spices and the promise of green gold. But long before tea carpeted these hills, ancient civilizations ruled. The early Senegalese harnessed the power of nature, transforming a wilderness into a landscape of temples and lakes, creating huge reservoirs of water to sustain life through the dry months. Today, their kingdoms are crumbled. But in these waters, their legacy lives on. An ancient, man-made land of lakes. Now home to the greatest gathering of elephants anywhere in Asia. A place where a new king rules. The sun rises over the southern coast of Sri Lanka. A land stalked by one of nature's most feared predators. The king of these shores is a hidden hunter. Persistent and fearsome predator. Leopards here are the biggest in the world. A deer carcass has been dragged high up into the trees. The prey of a Sri Lankan leopard. Although more than capable of carrying his own weight in freshly killed meat, he allows himself a moment to rest. The rains have just ended here. And in the dry months ahead, water will become increasingly scarce. Soon, his prey will congregate around shrinking pools. He must save his energy in order to make the most of such rich pickings. Parts of these lowlands are home to some of the highest densities of leopards anywhere in the world. The only leopard population on Earth 
to have evolved as the top predator in its ecosystem. In India, he must compete with tigers. In Africa, with lions. But here, he can rest undisturbed. Unlike this young leopard cub, one day it too will grow into a great hunter, perhaps even a rival to the leopard king. But for now, it must stay out of sight, waiting for its mother to return. Young and defenseless, it would be an easy target for a territorial male. Like each new life, it has no idea of the trials to come as the dry season tightens its grip. But for now, its world is one nourished by the recent rains. This baby elephant has been born into a tight-knit family dominated by females. Mothers, aunts and sisters provide everything it needs. And this is the perfect time of year for a swimming lesson. Nearby, an adult male, the largest land mammal on the continent. Like most male elephants, he will have left his family when he reached adolescence. Now he wallows alone. In these lush times of plenty, there's no need to join forces with others in search of water or food. It's everywhere you look. Almost 50 times smaller than India, Sri Lanka hangs from the southern tip of that great continent like a teardrop. It's a landscape like no other, where thousands of mirrored lakes breathe life into the land. Edged by the Indian Ocean, saline lagoons fringe its shores. While in the north of the island, pools known as villus dot the jungles. Natural sand rim depressions, which catch water during the monsoons and ebb away as the dry season takes hold. Waters which disappear beneath the mud, only to rise once more with the rains. But many of Sri Lanka's lakes are not what they seem. They may look natural, but these are not creations of the natural world. Instead, they're an extraordinary feat of man-made engineering. An irrigation system begun in the fourth century BC by Sri Lanka's early kings. They knew that while two monsoons drenched Sri Lanka, only one passes over the dry lowlands of the north, south, and east. For much of the year, these lands must survive without rain. And so, they ordered the monsoon to be harnessed.
they created a network of lakes, known to the locals as tanks. One of the most complex irrigation systems in the ancient world. The technology they used to harvest rain and conserve water is unsurpassed in the whole of South Asia. And so it was that the lowlands of Sri Lanka came to be nourished by an extraordinary collection of villus and lagoons, water holes and lakes. Some the work of nature, others the work of man. These hold what the ancient Sri Lankan king, Datusena, described as his treasure. Water to nourish agriculture and the rich wildlife of Sri Lanka's lowlands. For centuries, grey langurs have drunk from this pool. Known also as the Hanuman langur, they're named for the Hindu monkey god, who, according to sacred texts, fought battles on Sri Lanka's shores. Today, this monkey tribe must fight a different battle. They are the eyes of the jungle, constantly alert for Sri Lanka's most iconic hunter. Even while supper is served, sentinels keep watch. This is fine dining, Langa style. The tree is their banquet table grown with treats. Youngsters learn about the different fruits from their parents. The Langas spend much of their day sitting at their treetop table. Not all make it to the end of the feast. Luckily, other guests are more alert. Under the trees, waiting for scraps to fall from the overhead banquet, a herd of spotted deer. They too keep a lookout for any approaching predator. In an extraordinary example of teamwork between the species, these langurs and deer work together to ensure neither party are ever surprised by an unwelcome visitor. It's only by working together that the animals of the jungle can outwit this top predator. 
And it makes sense to have eyes and ears in high and low places. As the alarm goes up, the jungle is filled with the sound of an outraged mob. A crescendo of noise creates a very efficient form of neighborhood watch. Today at least, our leopard must admit defeat. Dawn breaks over one of Sri Lanka's most iconic landmarks. Said by locals to resemble an elephant striding through the landscape, it's known as Elephant Rock. Since the days of the early Sinhalese, the elephant has been sacred. Once kept in the stables of kings, it's a creature celebrated across Sri Lanka. Its giant form lovingly remembered, even in the naming of an outcrop of rock. As the sun rises, so too do the langurs. Leaving the protection of the trees, these expert climbers make light work of near vertical slopes. Their namesake, the god Hanuman, once pursued the sun, believing it to be a ripe mango. Today, the langurs seek it out for its heat, shaking off the cold of the night, basking in the warmth a new day brings, temperatures climbing to around 30 degrees. And this morning, it means they have front row seats at one of the jungle's finest aerial displays. Strange white forms cling to the base of a precarious ledge. A group of beehives, rich with delicious honey. The perfect place for a pair of bee eaters to snatch breakfast. But only one species is skillful enough to reach the honey. The oriental honey buzzard is an aerial specialist. The tight overlapping feathers which cover its head provide some protection from stings. But this is not an easy prize to win.
soaring past the cliff face, the honey buzzard explores the best angle of approach. Flapping its wings to alert the bees, it entices them out before beating a tactical retreat, flying faster than the angry swarm. Watching closely, a Brahmini kite, hoping he'll be lucky enough to pick off the buzzard's drop treasure. Suddenly, the honey buzzard turns, tearing back to the now undefended nest. It's able to grab its first talon load of precious honeycomb. The honey buzzard's mastery of the skies provides both birds with breakfast. This string of tiny sandbanks at the northern tip of the island is called Adam's Bridge, dotting across a mere 30 kilometers of shallow water to India. But the two pieces of land were once one. And over millions of years, Sri Lanka and India connected and disconnected. Each time they joined, new waves of animals would cross. Leopards and elephants made the journey. For some reason, tigers never did. Exactly why isn't known. But it left the leopard the ultimate ruler of this tiny isle. Like strange fruit hanging from the branches. Fruit bats wait for the sun to go down. At dusk, pelicans arrive at their roost for the night to join those who've woken for the night shift. Fruit bats are the largest bats in the world. Setting to work as darkness falls, they will seek out ripe fruit. As the months pass, the monsoon rains become a distant memory.
the sun burns down from a cloudless sky. The rich grass turns from green to brown. Luckily, the elephants of Sri Lanka are experts when it comes to this particular food. They have their own unique characteristics, traits belonging to no other elephant. Unlike African elephants, very few Sri Lankan elephants have tusks. Females don't have them at all, and less than 10% of males. But they don't just look different, they behave differently. And today, this calf is learning a few tricks of the Sri Lankan elephant trade. Its elders swipe clumps of grass across their feet before eating. Knocking off the sand and dust that cling to their roots. Scientists don't know exactly why they do this. But one theory is that it prevents wear and tear on their teeth. It's a piece of behavior passed on from one generation of Sri Lankan elephants to the next. A way of dealing with the lean times ahead. As the weeks pass, the dry season continues to grip these lands. The northeast monsoon from October to January would have filled these lakes to bursting. But during the dry months of the year, waters ebb away as the drought takes hold. In the blistering heat of the midday sun, most creatures of the jungle retreat to the cool of the shade. Surprisingly, it's the perfect time for these young jackal cubs to be sent out to play. In the heat of the day, most other predators will be resting. Jackals form a monogamous bond. The young will have the protection of both parents for at least the first year of their lives. Unlike this calf, who's been brought up in a tight-knit family, where mother always knows best. And in these arid months, her mother is wise enough to know that if she is to keep them alive, then she must lead her family in a search for fresh food and water. This lone male, too, is on the move. Like all the elephants in this area, he's setting off for the largest gathering of Asian elephants anywhere in the world.
the Leopard King continues to patrol the borders of his increasingly dry territory. Jealously guarding a scavenged boar against other hungry mouths, he drags the carcass into the trees. This jackal can smell food. If he finds it, his pack could strip it to the bone in hours. His meal defended, he returns to scavenge on what remains. Using his rough tongue to peel skin from the bone. Keeping the carcass safe is a full-time job. Especially when other predators are on the prowl. This crocodile has taken his search for food onto the land. Its home is the man-made lakes of the ancient kings. But during the dry season, it roams further afield for food. Marsh crocodiles grow up to four meters in length. And he has no problem making short work of what little remains of the boar carcass. As the earth wheels round the sun, the dry season reaches its zenith. Pools of water shrink in ever-decreasing circles. Beneath the surface, crocodiles bubble. With water so scarce, buffalo and painted stork huddle together while crocodiles snap at their feet. Huge concentrations of fish trapped in these shrinking pools mean the crocodiles ignore their fellow bathers. With each day that passes, the water continues to ebb away. 
There's nothing the animals can do but wait for the rains. Even the king of the island is forced to drink from these pathetic pools. The earth baked hard unrecognizable from the lush lands of six months before. Against the dusty brown of the land, bright peacocks display their feathers in a riot of color. A courtship dance, which, tradition has it, heralds the imminent monsoon. But this year, the rains are late, and the females unimpressed. This is a precarious time for all the creatures of the lowlands. With each new dry day, the fight for survival becomes more intense. Only the toughest will survive, huddled around what little water remains. Out at sea, ominous clouds gather, teasing, hinting that the monsoon will soon come. But until the rains arrive, the elephants depend upon a body of water created 2,000 years ago. These waters were dammed by King Mahasen in the third century AD. huge lake to store waters during the dry months. Lakes like these are lifelines for the animals of the lowlands in their fight to survive. For the elephants, their journey is over. Family groups have joined together into small herds. And then, bigger herds. And then bigger herds. Until 300 elephants converge on these shores. Finally reaching the center of the largest known gathering of wild Asian elephants in the world. These artificial lakes were built for an ancient people who had no idea how their creations would sustain life two millennia later. But water isn't the main reason for this gathering. Because this lake, filled to bursting during the monsoon, is, like all water in these dry months, receding. 
And what's exposed is the reason the elephants are here. Lush, rich, young grass. A spectacular tree. It leaves some rival males a little overexcited. While these elephants have found a place of rich water and lush grass, other creatures will not travel so far. Our territorial leopard king must stay to defend his kingdom. And wait for the rains to come to him. When they come, the waters of the lakes will be replenished. Natural villas restocked. The man-made tanks restored. A land of lakes in which spectacular wildlife can flourish. Water will breathe life into Sri Lanka once more. Shaped by man.